Why do we keep finding ourselves near desecrated malls? This mall's actually way more poppin' than the last one, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, you want me to just say what I'm gonna say? Yeah. All right. Hello, welcome back to season four of Julia Tries Everything, our final season. We have finally made it to Maggiano's in Long Island, or dare I say, on Long Island. And we are going to be trying every single appetizer, entree, pasta, more pasta, 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 desserts, cocktails, you name it, we're gonna be trying it. This is one of my parents' favorite restaurants, so I'm extremely excited to show you guys inside. Also, we're in the middle of a heat wave and your girl's in a sweatshirt and a track pants. So we're gonna just run on inside because that was a dumb choice. I feel like we're about to have the most classic Italian date. It is a beautiful menu. It really like, it feels luxurious. And the fact that we're doing this entire menu Oh gosh, oh, it's so large, sorry. Also, I guess this is a little side fact. Um, my mom went to Maggiano's last night. She did not know that we were coming here today, so she decided to text me. And um, if you guys know anything about my mom at this point is that she's um, not a woman of few words, she's a woman of many words. Um, do you want me to try to read this yes. all? Okay. <laughs> We went to Maggiano's tonight and it was, in all caps, HEAVENLY. We each had a side chopped salad. The dressing on the salad was so good and the garlic- We dipped it in marinara and in the rigatoni sauce. Highly recommend. I had been craving the eggplant parm and it was nice and crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. And we didn't know their plain bread was included already. It was so fresh. Ew. And I had those bellinis with the red wine float. We liked those. They packed it all perfectly too. We were both so happy and forgot why we weren't going there anymore. Okay, well, my mom said that we're gonna have a great time and everything is in all caps heavenly. So I'm ready for us to begin. Yeah. Ready to eat? Yes. Let's go. Is there, Here's oh. A bit of, you have sauce in you and we haven't even started yet. We are starting with the crispy zucchini frite and we have a lemon aioli sauce in here. I've, as a child, hated zucchini and Chels also is not a big fan of zucchini. And I don't know what it is for you, but for me it's that it's slippery. I think the end piece, the butt, is the best part. Okay, here. Oh my God. That's crunchy. We are starting off extremely strong. This is delicious. Even if you're a zucchini hater, I think you're going to have to give this a try. Up next, we have stuffed mushrooms. These bad boys are crispy. Look at that. Is that, do you think there's sausage in there and panko crust and some butter and lemon and oh, mm, parsley, mm, oregano? It is extremely buttery. I think that this is a perfect sharing opportunity because it is so rich. Up next, we have putting on the spritz. Gorgeous. Aperol, limoncello, prosecco, peach, soda, and orange bitters. Oh. <laughs> limoncello and prosecco, you really can't go wrong. And adding in the peach makes it extra sweet. It's almost like a peach dessert in a cup. Um, this is dangerous. Yay. We are going to talk about this calamari frite, which is one of their most popular menu items. They go through almost 1 million pounds of calamari each year. That's a lot of calamari. The calamari is a little bit more like beige and less of that really deep golden color, which for me means that I'm probably gonna like it more because it's much more light. Into the marinara we go. Very tender. Mm hmm. Mm. Extra crispy, but delicate. I'm not even a big calamari girl, and I'm enjoying this a lot. Okay. Let's let's take a little break from the fried food for a second. We have the Maggiano salad, which comes with smoked bacon, red onions, blue cheese, and house dressing. I would like to call attention to the big, big globs of blue cheese in here. Wait, bacon, red onion, blue cheese. Take a bite. Ooh. This is barely a salad to me. This is just meat and cheese and red onions with a little bit of lettuce. Perfect way to start your meal. All right, we have the Italian meatballs here, which were one of my mom's favorite things, if we remember her text message from earlier. We have some really beautiful garlic bread. It looks buttery, it looks like it's covered in herbs. We're gonna take our meatball. And 
let me just say this meatball breaks with just a spoon. You don't even need a fork. You don't need a knife. That's how you know it's tender. Wow, I love you. Mm. Look how perfect my little bite is. My dentist would be so proud. This is amazing. Oh. You should text your mom. I should. You're right. The meatballs are, should I say heavenly in caps? Heavenly. Yeah. I was gonna say water break, spritz break. Italian sausage flatbread. The lightest thing on the table, but also the longest thing on the table. I just love all the colors in here. This tells me this is gonna have like some robust flavors. All right. Mm. Super crispy. You have a lot of oregano, basil. It tastes really fresh. The meatballs and the flatbread both just have so much flavor that you're never gonna get bored with it that I really do think it could make itself a meal. <sighs> this is easier to share than the meatballs. The meatballs are impossible for me to share. I would have a hard time allowing anyone to like take the spoon. I'd be like, smack them and be like, no, those are mine. To sum it up, meatballs are the clear winner. Second place is going to be the zucchini because that's something that you're just not gonna get anywhere else. So these two are instant wins for me. Ready for the next round? Yes. We are in round two, classics round. What you see before us are four of the six classic pasta options you can get. We are gonna start with the spaghetti and meatball. Not balls, ball. We got a meatball the size, almost, you know what? No, the size of a tennis ball, right? I haven't played tennis in years. We got a marinara sauce. Now you can get your sauce as spicy as you want. They have a chili oil that you can put on it, red pepper flakes. So we have the standard spice level, but you can make it as you please. All right, ready? Uh, you're that close, okay. I can be closer. The meatball is the star of the show. The pasta is just there trying to support the meatball. I would say this is an extra saucy sauce. It's thick and it has a really great basil freshness going on and it feels very much like, I feel like we're gonna say comfort food a lot in this round, but this feels extremely comforting. We have the frozen peach bellini. We have two different options. The regular frozen peach bellini, or you get it with a swirl. The swirl is red wine. So if you would like extra alcohol added to your bellini, you know what to do. Let me start with the plain one first. It's a an alcoholic peach smoothie. Now let's see what it's like with red wine. This is the one I want. You can have this one, because okay. you're operating heavy machinery. And I can have this one. You know what's really funny about this setup? What? Is that I feel like the mural behind you is judging you a little bit. <laughs> Oh, they, they do look like they're slightly staring at me. Okay, if you're getting the peach bellini, I think you need to do it with a swirl. One, it's prettier, and two, it adds a little bit more depth of flavor. How much do I have to drink before my camera starts to wobble? Not much, let's be honest. Up next, we have the fettuccine alfredo. Fettuccine alfredo is typically one of the most popular menu selections at any of the Italian restaurants we've been to, so I imagine it's pretty similar here. I honestly, I usually rag on fettuccine alfredo. I feel like it's too safe of a choice. But this one looks like it has a little bit more going on. It looks like there's thicker pieces of Asiago and Parm going on. There's chicken in here. The sauce looks extra thick and creamy. There's no wateriness happening. So this gives me a little bit of hope. Buttery, salty. Oh. Are you okay? I'm in love. I just need a moment. I'm so happy. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Let's okay. Right there. <laughs> you really could walk away and I'll just stay here and continue eating this one. I don't even care about the next few rounds. I'm just eating this now. I feel like I just kind of was speechless and I didn't give like a full, full review, but just trust me, that is phenomenal. Wow. Um, I'm, <laughs> I just keep thinking about it and forgetting what's in front of me. We have the gorgeous lasagna. 
oh, layers, layers. We have Italian sausage in here. We probably have some ricotta. My favorite thing about lasagna is that it's basically an Italian birthday cake for us savory eaters. Mm. <laughs> I This is a dangerous place for me. I keep taking second and third bites. I can't explain what it is that's giving me such like joy and happiness, but it might just be that it's a really beautiful lasagna. Ready for a fun fact? Oh my God, Julia. Clack, you are the only person in here. <sighs> that was so unprofessional. I'm so sorry for burping on camera. Okay, what were we doing? We were doing a fun fact. Okay, let me try again. Fun fact. Maggiano's started in Chicago in 1991. One of the really popular streets in Little Italy that kind of inspired Maggiano's a little bit is called Taylor Street. Taylor Street is the name of this baked ziti in front of us, Taylor Street baked ziti. Most of the recipes came from Italian grandmothers, daughters, aunts. It, most of the recipes are inspired by an Italian person. Taylor Street baked a ziti. Oh, stunning. Oh, gonna fall over. Okay, I think we have more of the Italian sausage in here. Gorgeous. This tastes like a deconstructed lasagna. I, it might actually, you know what? It does feel like you're getting more than the lasagna. So if you're picking between the two, you are getting a little bit more food. So if you were splitting it, you could do the big ziti versus the lasagna. Mm. Favorites of the round. Why are we even asking? That fettuccine is amazing and gorgeous. Oh, one thing we didn't mention. This is actually, it's not even a fun fact, it's just a fact, but fun fact. When you come to Maggiano's and you order dinner here, you can take any of these classic pastas home, plus two others that we didn't show, and it costs $5 flat. So anytime you come to eat dinner here and you want to take home some of your favorite pasta. Maybe you got the ziti and you're like, you know what, I kinda wish I got the lasagna. You could order the lasagna to go and take home for $5. So it's kind of like a really great deal anytime you come here that you know that you're getting another meal for only five bucks. We are in, is this round three? Yeah, yeah we're at the halfway mark. This is the specialty pasta round which is where we're gonna find some of the most popular menu items. And we are gonna start out with the most popular, the Rigatoni D. We have the herb roasted chicken, mushrooms, caramelized onions, and a Marsala cream sauce. This is glorious and actually my favorite thing to order every time I'm here. I just love this thing. When I learned that Maggiano's caters weddings and that you can come here for your wedding, I think I had just this moment of Oh no, I'm gonna get married here. <laughs> just so I can have the Riccatoni D at my wedding. This to me is just a marriage, a beautiful marriage of flavors. The, the Marsala cream sauce, like it gives it this extra oomph to it. So it has that tanginess that you really want. It has a little bit of zestiness. I'm gonna have one more bite and then I'll move on to the next one. This is just extra saucy. Mm. There's a reason it is the most popular. Spicy Arabiata. This one has grilled chicken, spinach, and spicy tomato cream sauce. I could do even spicier. This is a good beginner spice, but you can definitely add it up and like make it real intense. I mean, I think you either add more fettuccine sauce to it to make it extra creamy, or you add a lot more chili oil and make it extra spicy. I think you could play it either way. Ooh, not gonna spill this on the table. Oh no, 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 no. We have the pomegranate martini. This drink, because it's sweating a little bit, it looks like it's bedazzled. Extra inviting. Okay. I love pomegranate. That is vodka forward. I spilled on the table, I'm sorry. This goes down so easy. <laughs> this might be my favorite drink we've had so far extremely chuggable. I would actually have this for, with my appetizers because it is so fruity and so bold. I think it would probably pair really well with like a beginning type thing and then get wine with my pasta. Love that. We have the eggplant parm and this looks like a movie prop, <laughs> eggplant parm. It's so pretty you don't want to destroy it and eat it, but obviously we're going to. Okay, 
We have a healthy dose of mozz, of marinara, of breading. Now that I've just really played with this bite. Mm. It, it, it melts in your mouth. I actually am gonna try it with the pasta because I think the meatballs did not need any pasta. They, they were a solo act. I think the eggplant actually might be even better with the pasta. Mm. Mm -hmm. The pasta has a little bit of a garlic going on with basil and really, really beautifully, I don't know if you can, can you see how like there's really good specks of parm in there? So it's adding that extra saltiness that you really want out of the dish. This is a great sharing one as well because it's already four perfect little medallions. So this one is a great family style option. We are on our final item, which is mushroom ravioli al forno with alfredo sauce. The first thing that I would like to mention is just how golden crispy these are on the top. Also, it has the alfredo sauce, which we know how I feel about their fettuccine alfredo. You know what it is? It's the damn fettuccine alfredo sauce. I am the biggest ravioli hater in the world. And my reason for it is not that I hate ravioli, it's that they never give you the right amount. They give you like five bites of ravioli for the same price as the rigatoni or whatever the pasta is. And you kind of feel like, that wasn't, that was dumb of me, I'm still hungry. This one comes with a decent amount and the sauce is heavy enough that it fills you up. All to say, Rigatoni D is always gonna be the winner, but I was not expecting to love this ravioli so much, but it's that damn sauce. Boom. Incredible. Do, 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 do. I feel like I have my own sangria. You do. That one's for you, and the other one's for me. Should we just start with sangria? We can start with sangria. Let's do okay. It. Wait, cute. Cheers. Cheers. We have the red and white sangria. Yep. All right. Oh, I am pleased. Yes. I'm gonna try yours. Yeah. You're pleased. Uh huh. What? What? What's? What's the note? It's sweet, but, but refreshing. I smell. <laughs> I was like, I smell orange. It I honestly the orange tastes slice. like the fruit cup juice. Yeah. Yours is better than mine. Mine tastes more like fruit punch, like a fruit punch sangria. Mm -hmm. The white sangria is the better option in our opinions. Doesn't matter what you're eating, just go with the white one. We have Chef KB's Lobster Carbonara. This has lobster, smoked bacon, sugar snap peas, a truffle cream sauce, and spaghetti. I'm so happy to see sugar snap peas on this. Ooh, and it has the truffle cream sauce on there and the peppers. Look at that cracked pepper. We have really, really thick bacon in here and it's not like obscure pieces of lobster. You know how sometimes you're like, is that real lobster? This feels like you can actually see the pieces of lobster. So you feel like you're getting, you know, what they're saying they're giving you. Extra smoky bacon. This is an extremely well-rounded carbonara. It is a hefty boy. Even with the snap peas and the lobster trying to kind of make it a little less rich, it's still very rich. Um, I think that the snap peas help kind of balance it out and give it a little bit of a freshness. Um, this is very clearly family-sized. You're splitting this. We have the linguine de mare, which is chock full of mussels. It looks like we might have, oh, is that lobster in here too? We have lobster, shrimp, mussels, clams, and a spicy tomato lobster sauce, as well as some pasta in the bottom. This is bountiful. That's the best way of putting it. I feel like a fisherman just went out and fished only for me. I'm gonna play with it, sorry. Etiquette classes, sign me up. Thank you. I effing love mussels. I love brininess and the way that it feels like it's a little bit from the ocean because it is from the ocean. This tomato sauce in here has really, you can see like there's some really good oils and fats going on. We have little specks in here. Ooh, this is an oily one. It's like an ocean watered down tomato soup. <laughs> that might sound gross possibly, but I mean it with love. It's like a really buttery, but brothy 
soup. I just want the broth, I think. I, I mean, the seafood's bountiful, but. You know what you need? Bread. Be ditched, yeah. Bring the bread back. <laughs> Is this the most chaotic episode we've ever done? Maybe. I don't know, I felt like I was about to fall over. Yeah, this, this is, this is definitely a bread moment. Yep. Oh my gosh, yep. This is what I wanted. Also, we haven't really had a moment to talk about the bread. So it's like little mini ciabatta rolls. And they were explaining to us that they take one big ciabatta and they score it, when it before it bakes so that they can kind of break it off so it feels like little mini guys. So you're getting that crispy exterior and then a really soft, tender interior. Get the bread with the linguine de mare. It's a must have, it's a requirement. Julia told you so. Okay, we have the salmon with crispy Calabrian shrimp. That's a four pepper relish, garlic mashed potatoes and sauteed spinach. Shrimp and the salmon all in one bite. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be eaten, but screw it. This tastes like um, something that you'd find in New Orleans, not in Italy. When you add the fried shrimp with the spicy, flavor the spicy sauce it's actually perfectly paired together and it's not as it doesn't make you sweat quite as much because the fried shrimp is helping kind of settle it down when you have it when you have the sauce with just the salmon though oh man I'm not the salmon ha, is not able to cool you down the, the way that the fried shrimp is able to um, I think this is great when you're trying to just feel something <laughs> If you're feeling a little emotionally numb, you can get this meal and it will bring you back to life. If you have any like toxic men in your life that refuse to cry, make me eat this, he'll finally cry a little bit, you know. We have the beef tenderloin medallions. It has portobello mushrooms, balsamic cream sauce, and garlic mashed potatoes. So these are our first few things that don't have pasta with them. Ooh, this is a really glistening, beautiful sauce. Not ordering pasta at Maggiano's feels a little wrong, but if you're going to not order pasta, doing these beef medallions is a great, great option. This feels like something I would want at Christmas time in the holidays. It feels like something that's really comforting and also really, really like hefty. You're gonna wanna be like on a chalet somewhere and like skiing down a mountain and eating this. I feel like these reviews are, they've gotten really, Worse. really specific. <laughs> okay, is this, the, this is the final item on this one? That's right, wow, go us. Chicken Francese, we have a Parmesan crust on here with lemon butter, arugula, and tomatoes with crispy Vesuvio potatoes. I'm really excited for a lemon and butter sauce. This is my favorite combo. Other restaurants would try to make this a sandwich. I'm so happy they didn't make it a sandwich because it doesn't need all the bread. The sauce, the breading on its own, delicious. It's lemony, it's light. It does have a lot of butter in it. Um, and if you eat a lot of the potatoes, it's not light anymore. But the chicken itself with the sauce and the arugula feels really light and refreshing. Um, I think a lot of these dishes are a little bit on the heavier side and are gonna feel like comforting, dare I say a warm blanket, a hug. This on the other end, on the other side of things is just much more like bright, refreshing. Like I'm awake again. Wait, was this the last thing I had to eat? Yeah. <gasps> Whoa, are we on dessert round? I haven't said my favorite. My favorite from this round is definitely the beef medallion. That just brought me to a lot of places mentally. And I would get this and not be sad that there was no pasta with it. It is glorious on its own. We are in the final round, the gorgeous dessert round, and we are gonna start with the warm apple crostata, which is just beautiful. It looks like the ice cream is like this perfect little ball of vanilla bean, and you can actually see the vanilla bean specks in there. The vanilla bean ice cream also has a caramel sauce. This is gonna be like a warm apple pie, but Italian style. Mm. So buttery. I love the edges of a pie 
like the edges of a pie crust are my favorite parts. And this gives you so much of that, almost in every single bite. It reminds me of a fancy McDonald's apple pie handheld thing that I used to have, but like luxurious. This is the largest creme brulee I have ever seen, I'm pretty sure. It is the size of my face, and I have a large face, so this says a lot. Mm -hmm. I love the crunch and how the sugar gets stuck to your teeth. Always have room for it if you're feeling like you ate way too much pasta, which is very probable at Maggiano's. I would think that you're going to have space for the creme brulee. Gigi's Butter Cake. Brown butter glaze with fresh strawberries. And this, is this even whipped cream? What is, this is, is it mascarpone. Because we haven't had enough butter today, we're gonna have a brown butter cake. If you're a texture person, this is the dessert for you. You have a little bit of a spongy softness going on, but then there's this like little bit of a bite stickiness happening. Again, like a toffee pudding. You could split this and eat this very easily. You're gonna have room in your stomach somehow for this. Can I do my espresso martini? Yes. Yay. So have you had coffee today, Julia? Okay. <laughs> my little hack is that you buy the cold brew concentrate from Trader Joe's and you don't water it down. So we're gonna keep that little caffeine train coming with espresso martini. This is brand new to the menu, by the way, and it's made with Italian espresso. So we're like very true to our roots here. It's really, really strong espresso. Like you can really taste the bean in there. Let's talk about these two classics. Vera's lemon cookies, which come on the cutest plate again. The detail, the designing on the plate. Let me take, come home with me. Vera's lemon cookies are actually the original chef's grandmother's recipe. So this is a very much an original. And we have a lemon frosting on here. These already remind me of um, like those loft house cookies, but a little bit more solid. Ooh, should you texture them? The lemon frosting is very delicate. It's, it's not really thick in any way, but it, the lemon is still has a punch to it. Yeah, I can see those easily disappearing off the plate. Two more items. Ready? You can't go to an Italian restaurant and not get tiramisu. It's a must have. They actually sell nearly half a million. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fun fact. They sell nearly half a million tiramisus every year. That's just bonkers. Okay. The lady fingers are doing it in here. A lot of tiramisus are so light and fluffy that you don't really get much more of a texture. It's almost like a pudding. Where this one, you can actually taste a little bit of a difference between the different layers. Tiramisu is one of my all time favorite things. It also has caffeine and coffee, my favorite things in the world. Caffeine and coffee. I meant to say chocolate and coffee. <laughs> That's good. I've clearly had too much caffeine today. If you love coffee, you love your chocolate, and you like that kind of moussey texture, I think this is gonna be a winner for you. Are we on our final item? Yes. The final countdown. We can't do that. Fun fact, we just learned, you can buy these lemon cookies in a tin at the restaurant. Do it. That's such a good, okay. Oh no, I'm about to sneeze. I think I got some of the tiramisu up my nose. Chocolate layered cake, which looks like the Matilda cake. You cannot tell me. <laughs> this doesn't look like the Matilda cake. Do you think it felt good when the chef put the knife in? Yes. It has to feel good. Okay. That ganache, wait, can I do, this is gross, but I'm doing it. Whatever, I'm taking it home with me. Oh. Oh. It's light, it's like a um, snack pack, chocolate pudding. Wow, it's much lighter than I expected. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. It is all over you. I don't care. I don't care. Everywhere. <laughs> is it anywhere? It looks, looks are deceiving for this one. I think that you could actually split this between two people and totally be fine. I mean, yeah, split it between like your whole party if you want to, but 
That one I would save space for. I think that I'm having such a hard time because each of these desserts is for a specific type of person and a different palette where, you know, if you're really into textures, you're gonna want something like the gooey butter cake. If you want something that's super like nostalgic and easy going, you're gonna want the lemon cookie. But if you want like a dessert, you know, you came here and you're like, I'm getting dessert. You're gonna want one of these too. I don't, I'm gonna need like a forklift out of here. <laughs> I feel, I, I feel like I'm very much pregnant with Maggiano's baby. <laughs> like, I've never gone back for second and third bites so much than in this episode. I, I think I just thoroughly enjoyed myself. I am very excited, one, to take all the leftovers home, two, to figure out that damn Alfredo recipe and make it at home, three, to take an extremely long nap. Um, it might just become a full-on slumber. I might just sleep until tomorrow. I, I'm staying, you have to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> na, 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 na. Na, na, na. Bye, Chels. I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs>